Welcome to the HB Live Academy. I'm your host, Gerard Scarpacy, and we are back with one of my favorite guests, Mr. Shea Dempsey. Shea's been sharing with us really um, an, incredible, an incredible amount of techniques with the blade, um, and it's part of a special program for Sebastian that he has designed um, con containing four different haircuts. And we're on our fourth and final haircut here, and we're so excited to, uh, to get into this. So Shay, break it down for us. Yes, thank you, uh, Gerard. So this is our fourth and final haircut in this, um, what we call um, iconic looks created with techniques from Sebastian. So you will have known some of the names like a shag, like a pixie. And um, it's our creative immersion, which are basic fundamentals of techniques, also our hair language that sort of lets you deep dive into, you know, exactly what Sebastian is about. I think a lot of the time Sebastian is known for its styling products, for its care. But not everybody knows that we actually have a huge methodology of when we cut hair and our you know, tool that we go to is our go tool is a blade, a feather blade. And uh, we've had that and we've used that technique and we've expanded that technique over 40 years of, I don't know, maybe 15 different techniques on how you can actually execute and cut the hair with the blade. So that's something to celebrate. Um, and certainly when it comes to blade technique, Number four is the one. Uh, this is the one that was created by Sebastian all those days in the past. This is the one that I can still remember to this day that kept me up at night. This is the one that challenges you to a point that maybe you want to get the doll head and send it right out the front door. This is the one that, you know, basically will put you to tears. But it at the end, is the actual sort of haircut that um, sticks with you and is, when we say the basic fundamental, this one you will never forget and this one you can tweak and sort of everything sort of pins on this because the stroke of the elongation on the skin is so long. So when you know how to do this, you can make it short, you can make it mid, you can add the pressure, you can make it more graduated you can make it flatter, you can make it squarer. So everything when it came about 25, 28 years ago about the skim, the skim was the catalyst to expand on. So, um, you know, leaving it to last, even though you might, you know, buy this course and maybe not buy the other one, but this is the one that sort of like everything emerged from that. So no further ado, let me just, let me just bring you through the haircut. Um, and I'm going to just set the doll head right here. I'm going to bring it up a little bit and then I'm going to show you a headshot of the sections. So which we have on our PowerPoint, we have basically um, the sectioning pattern as well so that you can sort of look through that yourself to go over it as many times as you want. Obviously this is the image here. And you know, I, I, I talk about it like from the image to the doll head. The first thing that you're going to see within the image and then when we turn to the doll head is that the first thing you're going to notice that is so Sebastian is that the line is diffused. Okay, so a bob is a bob, is a bob, is a bob. But in here, you can see that once you start to come down through that perimeter line, it's completely broken up and it's completely diffused. So it's ready to go and transform into something else. So you will always know that the signature line when it comes to even the graduated bob is diffused through the fringe it's diffused through the um, little fringe the short chewy fringe it's diffused so we're always constantly looking at transforming the styles into something else so that's the first thing you'll notice about our bob in comparison to other bobs so you can see here even through that picture it's beautifully diffused and it's ready to move um, so that's it so how did we get there very, very simple techniques. Um, this is, and, and I said, this is the one that's going to challenge you, is that we do not have a guide. There is no such thing as the guide. We have a reference, and the reference will be somewhere on the face for you to put in a perimeter line. But there is no guide after that. All it is about you with the tension in your hand and the pressure on that blade, and the more pressure you apply, obviously the flatter the shape's going to be, the more angled the shape's going to be. So it's 
we're giving it to you. It's in your hands to take this to wherever way you want to go. All I can show you within this section and pattern is how I apply the pressure, how I co connect and get the hair ready as a sheet of fabric so that the blade will cut through. And then you have to master that. So you're the, you're, it's in your hands then after that. So um, it's two sections over from the middle, uh, just at the back of the ear, over top, and you work at the back, and you drop down the sides. So here's what I'm talking about. The angle that what we want to try and do today is that we want to push that blade somewhere around the cheekbone down past the jaw. So the more we push in, the more weight we're going to release. So what you're going to do is you're going to relate from the, the jaw, or from the top of the cheekbone down to the jaw, and you're going to push that pressure in. But as you push in, remember this holding hand has to almost push back. So it, it holds it as you push. Hold it, push. So that's the skill set. You push too much and the hair is gone. Um, you've got a problem on your hands. So as we go, the first section is the back. And it's basically simple, small enough, comfortable sections in your hand to work horizontally and work up and skim. And you're skimming, again, you're skimming to the perimeter line. And that's where people really, really sort of uh, get lost. So if you can imagine when I'm up at the occipital bone and I'm telling you, you've got to skim to the top of the occipital bone to the baseline, but I still want you to keep the integrity of the hair as much as you can to the baseline. Remember, this is a bob, this is not a graduated bob. You're gonna lose your mind for about two days trying to do this because I have to, if I can move over here, is that I have to think of this has to come somewhere down to the baseline. Like, we're not going right to the baseline, but we're still not going up skimming and just skimming, skimming, skimming till it disappears and we have something super short like this. That's not what it's about. What it's about is a skimmed bob. So a skimmed bob is that basically we're working to still, if I turn the doll head profile, is that it's a little bit flatter, but also the skim works down through to actually take the weight out of here. So you're skimming as much as you can to the baseline. You're not going up here. So that's the, 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 the scale of like just knowing when I've thinned it enough that I haven't thinned it too much and there's nothing left. So there's that very, very fine line. So that's the back section and you just work up to the top. Um, usually I will sort of say that if you're going to sort of skim, use the reference of the head shape as where you want to take it in. So if the occipital bone is actually pushed out quite a lot, well then find the most rounded point here and use that as the angle to come in from. So that gives you a little bit of play. If the head's quite flat, well then you're going to have to actually sort of change that and maybe push flatter down onto the head shape. But again, you don't know until you have what's sitting in the chair with you. And again, then we just drop the sides. And, you know, the perimeter line is a bob shape. So there's nothing, you know, drop down, there's nothing going, elevating itself up. It's just a round sort of bob shape. And when you take the weight out, what happens? It changes it anyway. So if I move the doll head around, because I have to take it off and give it a little shake, because you've skimmed, it almost looks like it's shorter to longer, if you know what I mean. You've got this elevated because the skim has given you that like little elevation. But what's nice is then you have this nice length that's through the front. But it's still, there's, it's not, um, it's not something that we're trying to create this. What you're trying to do is create something that looks broken up. It's not just your square, square bob. It's not this geometric shape. It's just something that looks soft, feminine, um, and it's piecey. You know, it's got something that like if you were to move wind in it, it has this easy, soft movement so that if she takes it to a side, it can change direction as well. So you have all these different little elements. But look how easy the hair maneuvers 
Um, now you put too much weight into that. There's no way that you could actually start to sort of create like interesting little shapes like this. There's no, the, the hair would be too static. Um, so that's the beauty of using the blade and the skimming technique. So for us, this is called the skimmed bob. Um, so let me start. Also, you can really see some nice color placements here as well, where it gives it some, you know, definition of the actual shape itself. But we'll, we're going to do a little bit more work on this um, bob at the, at the very end. So uh, let's take you through and let's get going. So let me just um, get the section. I've got my sectioning clips. Um, obviously, we're going to use a feather blade. It's, it's the blade that we recommend for everybody. Um, it's got some really nice weight. It's, it's uh, really nice to maneuver. It doesn't feel too clunky or too big. So, and also, the blades are so easy to just change in and out as well. So obviously, you're going to have to have a completely fresh blade. Um, I have one in my pocket. And uh, you know I can go through, especially on skimming, maybe two blades. So that's important, number one. Second thing is your liquid tool. You need something that's going to make the blade glide. You need something that's going to help you create the haircut itself. So we're going to use today some whipped cream. And always remember, whipped cream comes out and you think, oh, I've got way too much. You know, there's a lot of people with color in their hair nowadays. So this is a caring styler. So it's not actually that heavy. So it's something that you can still create volume with. It's still going to leave the hair quite lightweight. Um, and then, you know, Potion 9. So it's, it's funny how Potion 9 is with our skim bob when this probably came out in the 60s and it's still there. Nine Botanicals, it's like the hero product in the range, still is probably one of our best selling products. And it's funny that it's on our most sort of heroed uh, technique, which is skimming. So we mix that with the whipped cream and you're going to look at it and go, wow, that's a lot of product. But really when you um, have a doll head, that's, you know, the, the hair has been treated. Um, I need to have the hair really performing to its, you know, highest quality because I'm now using a blade and I'm skimming down over the top layer of that. So I really need that help. So uh, I'm not afraid to put the product in and I'll probably use maybe Potion 9 Lite to dampen the hair down with again. Um, you know, cocktailing products, it's what it's about. I mean, you know, it's helping you. Um, it's also letting the client see that, you know, you're putting a product in, it gives them the option to say, well, why do you use that product? And without having to sell or do anything, you know, you're telling the truth. This is what the product does to the hair. So it all sort of works. So let's just find the section at the back first. We don't have any parting, so let's just... I usually just take my finger, just put it right at the back of the ear, and then I just come over top and go down. And that's it. It's simple, quick. Um, and that's that right there. Same thing. Find my finger, come over top, and down to it. Shay, uh, when you're doing a consultation with uh, a client in the salon, what kind of cues you in to them wanting this amount of texture in their hair? Or is it something that you really have to suggest to them? Um, no. I think um, nowadays, um, and I don't know whether this is for everybody, but nowadays um, people bring in so many Pinterest pictures, so many mm -hmm. ideas that they, before they come to me, they're sort of like, they're loaded up. They nearly have a Pinterest board set up. <laughs> and you know, that's reality. That's what people, and, and some of it's just, just not in the equation, and then some of it's actually realistic. I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I applaud. I say to people, bring in as many pictures as possible, because it gives me a better idea without spending time to get into the person, to find what the person's really looking for, whether that's reality or whether it's not reality. So also it's always good sometimes to sort of do the consultation with no cape. You can actually see what their style is. Are they going to be able to actually wear that, carry that off? This is a sort of very, you know, 
strong shape, even though it's soft and it's movie, but it could be quite streety as well. Um, with the color placement, it's quite strong. So you have to be somebody who's fashion conscious as well. You don't want to necessarily do it on something that it could end up round and poofy. So the hair has to be right. So uh, there's so many elements um, that come into play uh, before you even think of how you're going to execute the actual hair. So usually I will feel out the, the customer uh, or the client first. Um, and I'll try and read the client as much as I can. And while I'm reading the client, the easy part for all hairdressers that are looking at this, like for any hairdressers here today, is that the hair is the easy part. We can read hair in a jiffy. We can read the hair in, you know, as we talk and as we visually look at the hair, we know, okay, this isn't going to work because this hair is not. So now, as the client's talking in that consultation, you're working out in your head, what's the best way for me now to say to her, this is not going to work. So there's all, uh, consultations don't have to be a half an hour long. Consultations can be quick if they're in the right way. And I love the idea of the pictures. But if you're going to go into something like a shag, what's the biggest commitment is the fringe. You know, because the fringe is going to be long. It's going to be something that she's going to have to come back into. She's going to have to come back to you for a fringe. You don't necessarily want her going and maybe trying that fringe at home where she might be go too short and then it doesn't sit as well. So there's a huge commitment with a fringe. With a, a bob, like a skimmed bob, there is a commitment to that as well. If you, have, if you don't have the right hair and you still love it and you go, but I'm really good with a flat iron and I'm really good at smoothening my hair, okay, fine, but you're going to release a lot of weight. So remember, this is you're going to have to straighten the hair if the hair is not straight. So I'll be totally honest with you, I'm not going to do a skimmed bob on wavy, curly hair unless they're going to wear it wavy, curly. Then I'm going to use the twisted line. I'm going to put the twisted line in to increase the curl, to define the curl, all those situations. But if somebody wants and loves that picture, well then, really, you know, they have to have hair that's going to be suitable for it. Why would I use the blade? Why would I, um, you know, why would I want to send something out and I can actually perform it and it looks great but what's going to happen when she does it herself? So we always have to look at when the client does it herself. So you have to take all those sort of situations into, into consideration that, you know, easy for you to do it, but how's she going to do it? How's she going to blow dry it? So, but a lot of the time, if you've got the right hair and you've got the right technique in place, they love it. Like I do it all the time. Or sometimes undercuts, people go, well, growing out the undercut, well, how, how is that going to work out, you know? What does that even mean? I don't understand that. Well, how is that going to work out? It's going to grow out. <laughs> That's what it's going to do. It's going to grow Can't out. Can't fight nature. No. So it's going to help you keep something flatter if you've got thick hair. An undercut can be that long. It can be bladed. It can be something like this, where if you want to take weight out of the hair, you can go in and you can take all that weight out and you can flatten the hair so that it's still this length, but it'll be flatter and then you lay over another one. It doesn't have to be uh, a number two into the head, uh, but it helps the client flatten everything down. Okay, so here we go. So if, you know, this is, again, as I said, this is where it's all gonna be challenging to you. You put in a perimeter line, the perimeter line can be here, the perimeter line can be here, the perimeter line can be there. The only reason the perimeter line goes in first as you skim, and this is the first part, is that you'll know where to skim to. So it's not, um, you can't just skim away and just keep skimming and then there's nothing and then put in the perimeter line. Because how do I know where to stop? Where do I know where to put the pressure on? So it's like putting in a baseline. If you go in and then you want to come and layer to that, well, you're going to layer to that there, okay? So it's the same thing. Everything that you're going to do has a purpose and a reason why. So we put in the perimeter line on the first skim, and once that's in, that's it. There's no adjusting 
because if you adjust and you go higher, well now the skim doesn't match the adjustment. The skim is adjusting to the perimeter line. So that's what we do first. So let's have a reference point. Let's think of something where, you know, we can look at the hairline on this doll head and it's quite high actually. So maybe we won't go up there. So maybe we'll come down somewhere onto the jawline here. Okay, so the reason I'm saying that, that we keep it a little longer or maybe even just a little bit lower is that I can show you the stroke being so elongated that you'll see it, okay? So maybe let's go a little longer and you'll get to see a little bit more of how much hair comes away. So even straight away, straight away, even if we go down here, let's, let's take it a little longer. Even straight away, I am going to take my blade and bring it to the hairline. And you're going to go, wow, that's a lot of hair that's going to come off. That's how much you're going to stroke it down. That's how much I want this bob to be filtered. And if I don't start here now, I'm not going to take the length away and I'm not going to take enough weight away. So what's going to happen is underneath where a lot of people, the hair is thicker underneath the occipital bone. It's lighter up here. So if I don't start to take the weight away straight away, I'm going to have finer and then this bubble coming out and I don't want that. So I really want to take control now and really keep the hair in nice control and just rest it on that hairline and now you can see it's a case of giving it a few trials, keeping the elevation low and now I'm starting to elongate the stroke. Look at the stroke, it's quite fast and I'm taking the weight, taking the weight down and you know maybe we'll go to here. Maybe we'll just go down here. Now the stroke stops and it starts to get shorter. The only reason it gets shorter is that I need to take um, the line. But remember, you don't want to have like a super perfect line. Again, we're always striving for the perfections and it's when you do that, you've got a problem. So we're going to go longer with this. This could be great to be able to see how much you can take away. Down. Hairline and we start to really stroke. I can't really um, tell you on how much um, pressure I'm applying. All I can tell you is that I'm working from the hairline and the minute I start to go from the hairline, I'm pushing on the blade. I'm pushing on the blade all the time. And as I get to the end, the only thing that's slowing down, not the pressure, is the stroke. The stroke slows down and it gets shorter because I want to cut a little bit more of the line. But the pressure in my hand is quite strong. If I was to lay the blade down onto it here, you'd actually feel that like there's a lot of, there's a lot of, now there's no, like I'm tapping the hair because I'm just detailing. But on, the, on that initial section, there's actually quite a lot of weight coming away. So let's just take the length a little bit longer on this one. Next section. So now that you have your length determined, now I'm going to start to build on how much I want to go in and reduce the weight. Remember, it's not a graduated bob, it's a skimmed bob. So a skimmed bob is more where it's flatter and more broken. It's not necessarily graduated. That's why we need to skim the whole way down and you have a more irregular line. Next section. Keep control of how much hair you have in your hand. Now, on the doll heads, the occipital is not that prominent but probably with this we can sort of go to the, 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 the bottom of the ear here like if you come around here it could be just there on the rounding and you can skim the whole way through there even around to the sides you could skim so if you wanted a reference it's probably the middle of the ear on this doll head so I just go and I go little, little elevation just so as I don't want to go in and cut the the root, you know, you don't want to start going in there because that's on. So the skim starts here and then the stroke starts to apply. And now I can't tell you how gentle that is. I, I, 
I can't stress enough how gentle that is. So just barely touching the surface. Yes. Is caressing uh, okay? Yeah. Absolutely. So you're just literally caressing the hair. Like it's just literally just gently going because remember your baseline is in and this is a really important stage. This is the bit where you want to internally take out hair out of here so that it sits flatter. If you don't take this away, uh, you're not going to have anything different. You're just going to have a one length bob. So this is what skimming the bob is all about. You just go in and you're gently, gently caressing. Corner back, um, anybody that we, we talk about in our, you know, Sebastian hair language, the corner back is the hairline down to the corner where it changes. You'll see my hand comes to the corner back. So remember, I'm not going anywhere here. I'm coming to the corner back. Another safety blanket that I like to have. So again, just going back to this last section and always remember, like on the other side, the corner back. So it's not pulling it into, we're just coming directly down. Keep an eye on where that hairline is in with our um, elevation of where we're going to start the skim and then run down to the perimeter line. So we're just taking the next section and what you want to try and do is allow yourself, and it's very, very hard, it's a very, very hard thing to do, is allow yourself that perimeter line to be broken. We always sort of look for, you know, well, there's, you know, some pieces there, I'd prefer to sort of go at those. Don't. Just allow yourself, like we don't want long, irregular pieces, but you do want a, you know, broken line. So just go through it. Keep control is the most important. Set yourself up for the skim and then skim to that line. But remember, don't be afraid just to leave that nice filtered piece. There's a little long one there. Take that away. Move around. Now it starts to get a little quicker because you can start, you know what you're doing. You're going and you're starting to skim gently, gently to here. Down. There. Skim. Pressure just there. I don't want to cut that corner off so you can see I'm really being careful. Really have to focus. Sometimes, like that little corner, if that corner had gone away, I was in trouble. So you can feel it. So uh, there's just, there's no slacking off um, creatively here. You really are feeling everything that's going on. You're feeling the blade the way it's going through the hair. You're working on, you know, those reference points, that corner back. Um, you don't want to go super shorter to longer, but what you are doing is that you don't want to, it's so easy to just turn off and the next minute it's gone. So um, it's important just to check everything through. So now things are starting to speed up a little bit more. You can see the sections are still, you know, they're not super fine, but I do want to be able to see uh, the baseline. You know, I want to be able to see everything as it develops. Um, I want to be in control. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have a section that's too big and then all of a sudden I take too much hair away and then I'm in trouble. So I'm going to go a little longer there. Come around. And that's good. Don't be afraid that if you need to dampen the hair down, if you need to change the blade, anything that makes it feel a little bit uh, uncomfortable. Remember, don't have too much hair in there. Always check, just lay it there. That's enough hair for me. If it's out over the edges, the skim is not going to be even. So always remember that, that like when you're working with the blade, keep it horizontal. If you practice and then go 
and you just see that perimeter line down there and you start to skim. If you want to shorten the stroke now, shorten it. So essentially as you start to see it's peeling away at yes. it, you shorten the stroke just to finalize it on the line. Exactly. So it's just so as that you can actually get to that line. Um, but really all along here where the rounding of the head is, that pressure is being applied because you're taking more weight off there and then less pressure as I come and the stroke starts to shorten and there. Okay. So you can actually see that there's more weight being coming out of there. So back to the corner back. Things can just go along. There has to be a certain kind of like rhythm to the to the blade, right? Because if it's different, if it's faster on one yeah. and slower on the other, will you get a different effect? You will, and you you it's hard to then keep an eye on the pressure of, of where you're applying it. So if the if the if it's gentle to the touch, I think it's much you become more sensitive. If you're heavy-handed, your sensitivity is not that sensitive. So mm -hmm. if you're a heavy-handed hairdresser and you start to get in here and you start to get really powerful with the pressure, I think you're going to have a problem, you know. So as I said, you just get used to like being very sensitive and if you see the pressure coming away or you just then you change your hand so as you can take a more even. Now that back to that corner back, you can see the stroke is getting shorter and I cut away. This is how really when we look at it is how we master it is that it's all about the control. It's all about your hands controlling the hair. Um, and, and, and that's really the, 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 the fun of it is that you can make it your own, but also it's challenging. It's very challenging. And every time I do it, it's a, it's a different challenge. Back to the corner back. And um, sometimes I really feel like, oh, if I did it this way, actually it would be better. But then I lose the fact that I'm working in a line. But I get lazy sometimes and I want to go, but that would be easier because if I do it that way, it's going to work. But that's going to give me a different effect. So I have to stay structured and I have to stay on point of what I said I was going to do. And that's coming. There's, you can see now, there's the rounding and this is where we started. So I still have to continue, even though that's back, I have to make sure that that palette is ready for me to start to skim. And I have to make sure that I'm skimming evenly so when I get down here, if I leave my hands slide, 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 now start to slow it down. And I don't mind even leaving that there because I can just do that. And then we can just start to move the hair around a little bit more. I get this thing in my head as I watch where it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, <laughs> yeah. like a little, yeah. uh, a little ballet or yeah. a little dance with the blade. Exactly. And I also think, I'll pull up my sleeve as well, I think we spoke about this earlier on, was that there is a certain way to, um, you know, loosen up that hand. And I think it's really, really important um, that when we're talking about a delicate touch, you, if the hand is stiff and the hand is tight, well then everything will reflect on the execution on the hair. So I'm just going to spray the hair down a little, starting to get a little dry. So, yeah, again. so the actual skim, it's coming more from your wrist, not all the way from your arm exactly. or your forearm. Exactly. So that would be very heavy. Exactly. So if, you can, if I can pull this up, if I was to hold the blade out quite far I, and the finger rest, so say you were to use the finger rest, so now we're, we're right in here. So now all of a sudden we're completely, we're almost, we're caught. So... If I was to go in here and I start to do this, it would feel very, very stiff and it would feel very strong. So it would be hard for me to get a motion. If I come in a little bit closer and I take my finger out, I feel that now I can lay that on, but now I can do more of this motion. So there's a break in the wrist and I feel that it's like it's an up and a down and also the blade can go out and it can go in and it can go out and then go in in and it's almost like I can scoop where I need to scoop because I'm allowing my fingers to move on the blade like so 
but also I'm letting my hand break. And with that, then the elbow and the arm can go like that. So it's almost like push, let it out, push, let it out, push, let it out. So it's a bit like the rhythm that you said you had there in your hand. If I don't have a rhythm going, and that's why I started by not cutting the hair, I go, and then I go, okay, ready, Shay? Okay, apply. And I start to apply. So even for all these years that I've done it, I still like to do those a little warm-ups. And the warm-ups get me into the rhythm. Push, push it. Now I'm going down, push it a bit more there. If I was, this is my brain, push it in and now release it there. So if you're my student and you were doing this, that's what I would be saying to you, would be that if you're, if you're cutting the hair or Gerard's cutting the hair now, I'd say, okay, Gerard, start to push it in by the occipital because that's where you want it to disappear. Push it in a little more, go. Push it in more, now release it. Release it out and release it out. So basically what you're doing is you're flattening those areas and that will, will help you. So, um, yeah, it's, it's so visual and it's so, you know, it's tactile, you know, like it's something that I can't explain until you start to do this. You have to feel it and see it. Yes, yes, yeah. And when you, when you, when you get it wrong, you'll know about it in a second. Um, but that's, you know, we all make mistakes to get better. And that's the big, the best thing about this is that the more you do it, and maybe sometimes even the more mistakes you make, the better it is. And essentially each section is addressed the same way. Yes, yep, repetitive motion. Yep, yep. So the next question you're gonna be asked by a, a hairdresser who is watching this, who's maybe not as informed about the blade is what about the integrity of the hair? Like you seem to be taking off the top layer. So it's almost like me, me taking my, my blade and starting to do this to the skin. Am I gonna take off the top layer of the skin? Essentially what you're doing is you're cutting along with the grain in, in a downward motion. So remember, it's not elevated, so you're not chopping it. What you're doing is you're taking off the top layer, but with a sharp, sharp blade, and we can blow dry a little bit of this. What you're doing is you're running down the hair and with the guard, the guard finds little rooms for to cut the hair. So the guard helps you let the hair sit into those positions so it cuts the hair. It's not tearing the hair. Now, if you go along and you start to do this, well, that's scoring. That's going to cut me if I keep doing that. But the fact that the hair is wet, it goes into those little roots and it cuts the hair. So again, I would be totally behind somebody if they say, oh, what about the integrity of the hair using the blade? Honestly, you, you know, through mistakes and when you find how to do this the right way and when you go to blow dry the hair, you will find that the hair is not torn or the hair is not pinned to a point that it's like, uh, you know, you just can't do anything with the hair. I don't like to cut like that. I like to leave enough substance into the hair so that I can blow dry the hair. I don't like to go in and I don't like to see people use the blade aggressively because when you do, you start to, uh, you start to lose everything that's in the hair. I always like kind of uh, use the analogy that uh, it, it's like high, high, high lift blonding or bleach. Yeah. You know, if it's not used with a lot of um, attention to detail, you can damage the hair. Exactly. That's how a razor is. It's a powerful exactly. thing. But if yes. you're using it with attention to detail and focus, yep. you're going to get these really visible results like you do with, with bleach or high lift blonding. Exactly. It's like, wow, that's, there's a big wow factor. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah, you will get the results. You'll get them fast. Um, the client will come back. Um, it'll grow out nice. There's all the benefits, but I mean, 
you know, the tool can be very negative as well if it's used in the wrong way. So I'm getting near the top now. So you can see I'm still in that same position um, and I'm just literally gently going through down. So does the elevation remain the same or the amount of lift here? Is it always just basically low natural fall? Yeah, the elevation is pretty low. I mean, sometimes I like to come out off the head a little bit. That's just so as I can see my perimeter underneath. But really the elevation is still nice and low. And as I said before, if the, the, the elevation is low, you can create nice tension. And also you can create this really nice canvas for the blade to work on. Um, I'm always scared when the elevation comes out like that and then you go to cut it that you just catch it in the wrong way and then you leave these strong marks or else it's gone completely. This way, by keeping the elevation nice and low, you're in control and you can just get rid of that and just go through. And, you know, for educational purposes, I'm really taking my time, um, but I can show you on the next section sort of salon time, if, if that would help. So you'll actually see how I could sort of, you know, execute this um, in a more sort of, you know, real time sort of salon situation. And is this popular in the salon? For me, very, very popular. It maybe isn't so elongated, but, you know, sometimes I use a shorter stroke, sometimes I use like a stacked bob, sometimes I, um, you know, like to just use the, the, the bottom of the perimeter and make it really chewy and choppy. So, but I use the blade, I would think um, it's like in 70-30. And that's pretty, that's pretty good, you know. Even if you were using it 50-50 is good. Are you seeing more um, acceptance of people using the razor? More hairdressers with the blade? And, yes. And clients feeling more comfortable? Yes, absolutely. Um, it, my clients that get, you know, their hair bladed, obviously they're, they're used to it. Um, I still have to explain my situation because a lot of clients have had bad experiences with the blade. So when they see a blade coming towards them, they sort of like, oh, I, I've had a bad experience and I'll go, well, look, you know, this is how I use, this is my approach. This is why I use the products. This is how, you know, the blade really works. So it might take a little bit of time to explain, but in saying that, it, uh, it makes the client feel more comfortable. But I think with social media um, and, and so many hairdressers online uh, just doing on their stories about their personal work on YouTube, um, there's even tutorials on YouTube about how you use the blade. I mean, it's become huge, huge. And even a year ago, this is, was part of why we decided to bring out this course because this has been, um, you know, Sebastian was almost like the black sheep of the family because we constantly used the blade and and people really thought that you know it was crazy but now because it's become fashionable we were sort of like wow we're really on time with this this is something that like we've been doing for so many years and people thought we were crazy and now you know no disrespect to the YouTubers like we were doing better versions we we, we had mastered it, so when we were told about these YouTubers doing it, I was like, wow, uh, we need to sort of celebrate this because we're the people who sort of came up with a lot of these ideas. Here's the salon, real time. So you can be there, you can be, you know, talking about holidays and you can be talking about whatever and you can just be working away. My hand now is just moving, feeling the tension. Remember, that's going to pop up a little bit, so just leave it. Is there any little bits there? Maybe a few, but nothing major. Um, let's take it down. All I need to know is that I have enough 
not a, you know, enough hair in the blade that's not going to, you know, be too cumbersome and, you know, affect the pressure. Now I can just start here, go a little quicker. Done. Next section. So now we're coming down. So this is salon time. And what you can do there is just start to work it. I haven't checked anything. Come around. Once I have enough hair in there, that's I'm fine with that. Then I can just go again. And basically the, the length of the skim, you're gonna determine it based on what, you know. You're just showing one one example of a kind of a pretty consistent one. Yes. People can vary that length depending on what they want to, to see. Where if yes. it's a little thinner or a little denser. Yes. Yeah. And you know, if you want something that's sort of not so round and you want something that's really fitted to the face, well then obviously there's going to be more pressure on the skin, so you're going to take more weight out. But you have to be, remember that when you start to take more weight out, you remember that you just have to be careful of that baseline, that you don't mm. lose the baseline. Because you could just end up with a short layer exactly. in the middle of the hair. Exactly. Yeah. So now and you let's can be see. honest, that's going to happen, so that's why you want to practice this first. That's right. Yeah. That's going to happen. So you can see now, I'm just checking it through. I can actually sort of feel it. Elevates a little forward out just to check. Let's give that a little, loosen that up just a little. Like remember, don't get too crazy with the fact that you oh I don't know about that line is it needs to be strengthened up a little bit remember this is let it go you have to sort of So, I want to show you a profile now. So once we come in here, you have something that's a little bit more fitted in this area here. If I take it out and I pull it apart, you'll see that the skim is not going to be exactly down there, but you know what, it's, it's pretty close. You don't want it completely down there. But as you can see, head hugging, probably that's the best way of calling it. We're cutting to shape, remember. You're in control of the shape that you want to cut. I even said before this haircut, like we have a shorter version and now I'm going to do a longer version. The reason the longer version was, again, usually when we teach these is that we go longer so as we can really expose the elongation of the stroke to challenge you because the further the longer you go the harder it is to get to the end you usually get to here and then it's gone and you're like oh no you have to go keep going so now we're going to go straight into the sides okay if you want little tip if you like this type of a look and you want to elongate that sort of front piece like there remember the corner back is somewhere you can always take it back to which will give you that dip of an extension of length with this, we don't have to do that, okay? So you're saying you could like rotate that hair and bring it towards the back? So I'll show you, yeah, you could... Give it a beautiful A-line. Exactly, so what you can do is still take horizontal sections, just go across the head, very, very simple, like so. And what you can do is take everything right behind the ear, use this as your guide, Obviously, the, everything would be dampened down. And it doesn't come around to the ear. So you have to find, okay, where's the corner back? So watch, it comes back. Here it is, it's starting to show itself. Down, 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 and you're there. Now, if I put my finger there, so you would be here. You would start your skim here, like so and you would start to skim the hair 
The hair is a little dry, guys, so I'm just showing you. It would be there. Let me dampen that down. I might as well show you. If you wanted to do this, you, it's, it's quite fun because you'll have a nice length left. So come in, dampen the hair down. Skim stays the same. Just you have to make sure that your palette of the hair is still nice and clean, that you're not drawing in lots of other hair. So remember, keep that tension in here, grab it. Now I'm in control. Now it feels comfy. Where did I start? Somewhere here we said. Rest the blade on. Now, gentle, gentle. Drop it down. And you can see. So this is a really nice safety blanket. Um, also, it can look really, really cool because you've now just created that really nice little A-line as well with something so simple with the exact same technique, repetitive motion, the same skim. All you've done is brought it back to the corner back. And that's it. It's so easy to follow. It's just middle of the year with the skim, corner back, pressure. The pressure is the only thing. So... I mean, you could, cut, you could cut the whole thing if you felt a little nervous about cutting with the skimming at the start. Maybe that's what you should do. Maybe you should bring it to the corner back and uh, maybe that will help you um, be sort of, you know, you might execute it more confidently because you know you've sort of got that safety blanket there. Because here's the... Here's the challenge on this. Remember, the skim is going to stay the same, but yet the, the length of the hair and the thickness of the hair on the sides, there's less hair, okay? So now you even have to get, you have to get more gentle with the skim. Because if remember, if you take too much away from here, now you've got a problem. So take this, this section at the side, have a look at where your reference point is. It's right there. Okay. So you now have to look at taking all this off, but you also want to do the same. So you now have to start to skim here. And that's a scary option when you've got very fine hair on a client or less hair around the front. So these now have to be super, super sensitive. So yes, maybe going to the corner back could be perfect to try, but it's also perfect to do it this way too. So middle of the ear, it's right there. So now keep that blade, do your few pieces, do your trials, I'm ready to go. And now I'm gonna run along. Depends on how much you wanna fit into the head, like it depends on how far you wanna go. Start to slow it up a little now. And then I start to skim. I really like that this, this just happened, so I'm not even going to go near that. That's just really nice there. So essentially the main difference here is the pressure from the back. Exactly. And just being more light-handed. Exactly. Exactly. And you'll see that you're taking less off because basically less, less pressure, less off. And less hair in the sides anyway. So yeah, it's just really working. I think I have a little too much hair there, so let's just do this. Natural fall, come to the middle of the ear, feels good, start, and let's go. Now I'm going to concentrate on getting the palette super balanced. There, need to balance it, get it. Maybe take a little more off, so let's just see, bring this one in. Now the initial part of what you're going to see is that like, I really, oh, I don't know, there's a long bit there. Oh, I don't know about that. Remember, you have to blow dry the hair. You have to, or you might be letting the hair dry naturally. The idea behind this haircut is that it's loose. It's a skimmed bob. If you want to check it, go like you were going to check anything. Come down close, bring the elevation in put it in, let me use my finger this way so you can see. So this is here, maybe that's there, maybe you could do it a little nick, 
I, I'm, I'm not really that bothered, but I mean, you could give a little nick like that. The last thing you want to do is do anything where you go, oh, I'll just knock that off. Because you're just reversing everything that you've tried to do for the last 40 minutes or so. So I'm going to just take two more sections. I'm just going to go through here. Drop it down. I'm going to put a little bit of water on here. And we're nearly there. It's just a repetitive motion that you're going to have to somehow spend a lot of time um, mastering. You know, it, 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 it can be painful. I mean, a lot be. of hairdressing, that's what it is. I mean, doing a perfect woven highlight or, yep. you know, a perfect blunt bob. Yes. It's all about re yep. repetition, consistent repetition. Yes. And I'm sure you can remember the first time you did a graduated Bob, I can, or ABC when there was, you know, like, there was no room for error. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's room for error here because it's such a visual type of situation when you cut hair, especially with something like a blade, you're going to see the, the mistake mm -hmm. straight away. And also, I think you really have to just, you know, let yourself be a little free with it. You know, you don't, don't, you know, you, this is what it's about. You know, it's, you've got to let yourself be a little free. And I think, you know, what, one of the things we discussed earlier in our, like, interview was that a lot of this is for people who have a little more experience. Yes. You're not saying this should be your first haircut you learn. No. As, as a hairdresser. Absolutely not. Yeah, I think that's when things will get, yeah. The last thing you want to do is then use the blade and then you put it back down and you say, I'm never going to do that again. I hate it. It happens a lot. I've seen that yeah. a lot in my career. Hen I hate the sensation. Yeah. Uh, and then you ask, why do you not use the blade? I just don't like it. Yeah. I That's all the, I just don't like it. Yeah. Did you give it a chance? I just don't like it. Yeah. Last section, so you know I can take that, keep it nice and clean, keep the direction down, keep control. And remember, this is the last section, so just be aware that you know this is the the, the outside layer. So take your time, and I really like to leave this area just really broken like because this is the side you know the sides can sometimes look solid so i really like to loosen this up so it really gives that nice shattered effect so again if you want to do that and by bringing it back a little bit like that will extend the length a little bit here in the front anyway but you know you can skim from here a little bring it back a little bit there so you can have shorter bits longer bits you know a nice little shorter longer like a nice pieciness to it okay let's do the other side and you can see i didn't i didn't really check that at all so, I mean, you can go through if you want, if in front of the camera like this, and if you want to check any little bits, but remember, don't do anything too straight. Just like nip a little here and there. But I like this length. This looks, this looks nice, and it'll give us a nice image. If we go profile, you have a little bit more length in the front. You have a flatter feel in the back. So when you blow dry it, you'll have this sort of squarer feel instead of it being round and bulbous. So we just do the other side. And as I said, this is where it feels really uncomfortable, but it's just on that first section, you can see 
Why would I want to go crazy? So all I want to do is start gently. You saw me bring it behind the ear to the corner back. Now you're seeing me do this forward. Can you imagine if I added too much pressure? So this is the one that it's almost, you can do it with your eyes closed. It's almost like I can feel, like I know it's there, but I, I'm not even looking at it. I just, I almost just feel it. So it's really important that, yeah, there's that enough of that, enough of that weight is away. And now I need to find where the baseline is so the stroke starts to go a little bit shorter. But again, I'm not going to try and do something really definite. Let's go like this. You want to nip that off? Nip that off. But be so cautious of, co so cautious of your um, pressure here. And even if you want to start a little bit lower, well then that's fine on this first section. Like, you know, that's a safety blanket as well. Like, imagine if you took this corner off, it's, it's, it's over. So bring in that hair in there, so is it, if you bring in that previous section, now you've got this really nice, now it's controlled. So now I feel more comfortable, I can go down and I can start to put the pressure on and it's gentle. Like, it's like super gentle. Next section. And again, if you um, want to change the angle, you can either do corner back or yep. you can change the angle of a blade. Absolutely. Like on your graduated bob, you went uphill a little bit, so you kind of like rounded the blade up. Exactly, exactly. You can start to change the blade, like you can change the angle, so that will actually push the weight in a certain other direction. Kind of like bias the skim one way or the other. Absolutely, exactly. So now we're just moving along, moving a little quicker. That's enough hair there. Start, and now start to run down now. Just get that. Such a refreshing thing, again, I think if someone's been working behind the chair for a while and working with, you know, more geometric based hair cutting, which I think is how most of us yep. become hairdressers. And Absolutely. I think it's a good thing. Yes. But then you get to that certain point, five, six, seven years in maybe where you're like, is this all there is? Yes. And yeah. then you can start to get into things like this that are a bit yeah. more organic and, and carved, carving and sculptural. Yeah. And then it becomes refreshing for me if I have a client who really just wants a really solid geometric shape. Yeah. It's so yeah. refreshing for me to go and take a scissor, I had a really nice scissor that you have, and to go in there and do a haircut. I'm not going to try and change a client because of her request. Sure. So I don't do that, yeah. I, I, I'm versatile. I am. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's why we can be successful hairdressers because um, a lot of people are going to say, well, I don't know if you're right about that, but for me, a customer is always right to a point. I mean, if there's a certain client that... Uh, in we, what they like, they're in what right they about like. what they like, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to stop you yeah. wearing your shorts every day. <laughs> yeah, if someone wants to be a redhead, you don't spend an hour trying to convince them to be blonde. No, yeah. no, and, and you know, it's funny when you look at fashion and you think of, like, say, Prada or something like that, and it's very structured and usually the hair reflects the person in the clothes if it's a Prada suit and she's a businesswoman. Usually the hair reflects that way. So there's no way that I'm going to go in there and say, well, I think it would look nicer. Even if I really did, softer, I would be inclined to go with her and, and look at it and then maybe at some stage she'll tweak it and we'll go softer. It's also the relationship business. Once you've yes. had, that's not a good way to start a relationship is to be like, no, you're wrong, you should do this. That's right. But like once if you're, you've built yeah. that relationship, then there's a trust. That's right. So if you're trying to start off to build a clientele, I mean, the last thing you're going to go in and try and sort of, you know, change somebody from a nice graduated solid line bob to a completely bladed bob, unless she wants that and requests mm. that, well then, this is what we're trying to teach is that like the more techniques you have in your arsenal, the better rounded hairdresser you're going to be.
Agree and, completely. And, and that's it. It's this is there's no right, there's no wrong. This is it's just gotta look good. It's gotta look good. Yeah. It's gotta look good. Yeah. And the client's gotta feel good and, and that's it. So again, be very gentle. Anything around here, I always think, you know, be very, very gentle that you don't go in there too much and take it off. Now down here I can go in. So I can go back at that. So let me go back in now. Look at this, look how, look how flat you can have it. So you can go in and you can start to go through it a little bit and open up some little spaces. Then you can go in and take off a little sheet of that there for a sec. Take that off. So what's that gonna do? It's just gonna break up that line a little bit more as well. And we have two more techniques that are just really quick to break that perimeter line a little bit as well. But this is salon speed right now. So your first section in a salon would be this. And now your second speed would be to check it through as you feel it. And you can even sort of go through and just gently take big sheets and you can just do little stuff like that. Break the wrist, break the wrist. Just break the wrist. Also, we didn't really talk too much about the color placement. So, you know, to give it dimension, we've obviously lightened underneath so that as we skim through the hair, on that top layer will be skimmed through, you'll actually start to see that color come to life a little bit more. And you will see it on the uh, pre-done model when we do the final sort of detailing, you'll actually see it's, you know, there's no sort of, there's still a little dark root, so it just bleeds from the dark into the light. And um, it's, you know, accents we talk about in our hair language, accents can be anywhere, right off the crown, <laughs> off the accent, the fringe. But here, probably, the accent would be probably the color because the color is actually starting to come alive. The more you cut through the hair and the more you sort of break into the hair is where the color starts to get exposed. So um, it's a nice little accent for the haircut. And it gives it that nice dimension from dark to light. And by bringing that hair back, you get that little bit of extra angularity at the front? Exactly, so I try and look for the, the hairline here, and I just bring it back and just like lay it down on that. So it just gives that little bit of, uh, a little disconnection, which I suppose makes it a little bit more interesting as well. So um, yeah, I just like hold it back into position, lose that. Now I've got this nice little bit of hair here keep everything clean and this is your final section keep in control and again just gently just go through skim to the perimeter now I can just go through and do a little detail Take all the section grips out. So I'm going to change over and you can see what I'm going to show you what we're going to nip off bring the doll head around Whoop. so you're going to be left with a little point here 
which you can either just nip that off, but there's a technique of how you would sort of loosen that up because it might be nice actually to leave some of those pieces. Because remember, your hair, she's not gonna wear her hair like that. Nobody wears the hair like that. But when you take it back and you move it off the face, what you do get are like some of these little long pieces. So it's something nice to sort of expose those a little bit. So let me just um, bring on the, the other doll head. Uh, you can see that nice little shape. And I will show you just quickly, and this is just a detail. Um, it's something where, you know, you've come this far, so you want to sort of really sort of, you know, detail it to a point that it's be more bespoke for the client. Maybe the client wants it a little bit more sort of filtered around the front. Maybe she doesn't like it being too bobby, you know? But if we come down here, you'll see that we have this little point, okay? Right through here, actually, you can see it. So what we can do is take a little bit of that away. Take that central section. Why don't I just do this? There. OK, do this. Isolate that. Isolate that. And I do this on dry hair because the blade takes less hair away on dry hair. So we have this point that we want to reduce. But I don't want to take it off because if I take it off, we sort of, that's the beauty about with Sebastian. We sort of leave things that look sort of a little bit, you know, off. Um, and and that's, that's what I like about it. So I'm going to use a technique called curve cutting. And what curve cutting does is, it opens up spaces. So if you can see that when I have it in my hand, it's because it's black, it's so solid. It almost masks her hair, like you can't even see her eye through her black hair like that. So it's a good way to see that it's like, it's, it's, it's really, really solid. So what I want to try and do is from about the top of her lip here, I want to sort of curve cut and open up these spaces so it just becomes a little bit more veiled like a veil-like, instead of it being, now we're not losing the bob, but we're just doing it a little bit more veil-like. So if I use the feather blade, what we do is if this is the blade that goes in, it's going to go in around the tip of her nose and it's going to angle itself and it's going to cut to the right. We're going to leave a gap and it's going to cut to the left. You can go up here, but why do you want to go up here? This bit's going to fly out here. It's not, this is not what it's for at the moment. We're talking about breaking the perimeter. We're going to go right, we're going to go left. It's in your hands on how much you want to take out. You know, I've seen people go in and they really open up the spaces and it can look fantastic. I don't know whether I want to do that, but like, let's see. So I'm going to find the tip of the nose, which is right there. Now look at the angle of my blade. So remember, you have to come down here so as you can get down there to open up that space. So go in, apply the pressure like so. Go out and leave a gap, and then you go in and you apply the pressure, and then go in and apply the pressure. Oh, there we go, apply the pressure. So you start to take out like pieces that are quite big. To me, like there's quite a lot of hair there. So you don't want to go crazy, but now you can comb it down and you can start to have a look at like where you are. So maybe go and just take a little bit more off there. And that opens that up. Shay, on the graduated bob, you use a technique called pen cutting? Yes. Um, how does it differ from carve? Um, curve, cu curve uh, cutting. Yeah, curve cutting, basically you're opening up internally, you're carving out sort of almost like of ovals. So, you're, so there's, a, there's a negative and then there's this positive open space. So it's a little bit more aggressive. So pen is the cutting, pen cutting is, more linear and this is more curved? Exactly. So a pen is almost like it's going much more linear. So it's filtering. So the pen can go in and you could do that for veiling. So here's the pen. So the pen can just go through. Got it. And you'll see when I comb through, 
a lot less sort so of... So it's just filtering and then the curve actually creates space. Exactly. So if I really want to open up the space, I can go in, put that angle in and you'll see it creates a hole. It actually right. creates a hole. And then I can go in here and I can create a hole. Again, light-handed, you can right. go in here and cause yourself uh, some trouble as you go along. But you will see that that point has now disappeared and we have almost like, well, you'll see it now in a sec. Let me see. So all of a sudden we've got some shorter pieces in here and now we're exposed with these longer pieces. So what it does is it sort of, it breaks, it breaks this sort of disconnection of the length. But now when we take it back, so let's just take it back off the face um, and we shake it through. We still have these nice little um, pieces that sort of expose the chewiness and the lightness and the diffused line instead of it being so solid. I wouldn't do an awful lot with this. I mean, I would maybe use some dark oil. Put a little bit of some mist, dark oil mist, which is basically dark oil um, on a lighter version. Um, and what that does now is that will allow this to work its way in and really expose those pieces. You know, maybe what you can do is, if you want to sort of play around with partings and stuff like that, it's always nice to maybe just, you know, pull it apart and zigzag it just a little so you're not so perfect with the line. So like by just ma making that little bits, it loses that sort of sense of like whoop, straight down. Now all of a sudden, you know, you've got this sort of nice little textured. And then I would definitely ruffle the back up a little by just moving it around. So let me turn around a little. I was going to ask you about partings. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Do you ever cut something like this from a deep side parting? If Abs someone, yeah, Absolutely. you can adjust the parting, same technique. Absolutely. I love it. I love sometimes that, you know, you cut it into a definite parting and you have that slight asymmetric feel. You know, I really, really love it. But to me, um, I really don't think you need to do any more with something like that. It says it itself. It's, it's, got, it's got that sort of uh, loose, free, um, transformable shape that like um, we just say, we just say, for instance, she wanted to take it over to a side. Well then, because the weight is gone and it sort of generates this life itself, that maybe we can just move the hair a little bit over to the side that will expose the color a little bit more and then take this and swing that over there. And as I said, sometimes with a geometric shape, it's just not that easy to send it on its way and to do something else. But like if we look at this, we could maybe make this a little bit more sort of like almost like this crazy little side fringe and then this has come over here and then you can just sort of start to get a little bit more editorial and send this back a little bit so that the pieces are coming out here. The blade just made the hair so pliable. Exactly and you yeah. can see that you can make little airy spaces and um, you know honestly you can have you know I'm just sort of playing around here but you can have so much fun with like maybe now this is this we've created this crazy fringe, you know, that sort of starts to, cre you know, turn into something else. Um, and then through the back, you've got a different look. So it now looks a little bit more graduated because you've lifted it up. So that's it. Um, so another incredible lesson. It's everything that I love about our craft, you know, um, combining the visual and the technical and mm. what an incredible series. I think that, you know, our, our students are, are going to get so much out of this. I want to thank you and thank, thank Sebastian you. for 
you know, the incredible dedication to our craft to, to sit down with us and do this and spend time and for you to distill all your many years of knowledge. Yeah, well, thank you. I've really enjoyed it. And I hope that everybody will, uh, if it's not the four, but see one or two of these and it'll sort of change your perception of how we use the blade, the hair language, maybe educate you a little bit more on Sebastian and our heritage. Uh, and, you know, as, as Gerard said, it's about sort of giving back and also, you know, to achieve and accomplish other skill sets. Yeah, we never stop learning. I know you don't, I don't. So, yeah, I hope you all enjoy.